So Bernard Laporte has been in the news uh, recently. I think it was today here in New Zealand. Uh, in his bid to be vice chairman of World Rugby, uh, he has come up with a plan for a Club Rugby World Cup, which is something that gets talked about. I feel like it's quite a lot, but generally by us fans, and generally after one of the Club Rugby seasons ends, Super Rugby gets won by, uh, you know, the Crusaders, and then Saracens win the Heineken Cup, Champions Cup, and we wonder if these teams met who would actually be the champion. And generally, I think when we talk about that, the idea is that the two teams that were champions of each of those competitions would somehow meet for like a one-off match. Uh, it would obviously have its own problems because one of them's going to either be a bit underdone coming in maybe before the season starts or during the off-season or having a, a match in the middle of their season either way the, the timing is not ideal and um, trying to find slots in the already crowded rugby calendar is something of a mission so it's always been a bit of a pipe dream but uh, Laporte is talking about it I don't know how much of this is just a uh, political move to try and get people to vote him into this job with world rugby but the one that I read talked about having uh, six teams from super rugby four from the premiership four from the pro 14 four from the top 14 in France, and then uh, one each from the top league, which is Japan and America. I talked about the United States, so I'm assuming it's the MLR champion, but I guess because there's a South American competition as well, if the champion of the MLR was to play the champion of the South American competition, they indeed could have their own champion who, if this ever got off the ground, uh, could compete there. So not necessarily the United States, but I would imagine in terms of revenue, they would love it to be the United States. So, um, yeah, it is basically about making money, talking about how world rugby or rugby clubs generally around the world right now are suffering along with everybody else in terms of the shutdown. So, um, yeah, they are, um, I guess, putting out some ideas from some potential options. I mean, I couldn't help myself when I read this because, um, you know, I've always... Dreamed about um, the two the two champions of North and South meeting up. This is a much more expanded version, and Laporte was talking about this uh, potentially replacing the Champions Cup um, to be a yearly competition. But the uh, EPCR, who run the Champions Cup, basically replied and said, "Look, there's already been discussions underway about a potential for uh, some kind of Club World Cup." So it's not really appropriate for him to bring it up now. And if it was going to happen, it would be once every four years, which I think kind of makes more sense because, I mean, speaking from a Southern Hemisphere perspective, and I guess you Northern Hemisphere guys will be able to let me know your thoughts, but there was a lot of excitement about Super Rugby when it kicked off because it was teams that we didn't often get to see uh, suddenly playing each other in a best of the best competition. But as time goes by, that kind of gets old. But if you have it every four years or biannually or whatever, then I guess there's more potential there for it to be uh, fresh. And when it does happen, it's not kind of uh, stale. Although it would be unfortunate if you had a particularly strong uh, club team that just happened to win the championship in a year which wasn't designated the Club World Cup year. But um, yeah, that's, that's the discussion. So I went ahead again. I couldn't help myself because this kind of stuff does come up every now and again. I had a look at the current tables as we are locked down for Super Rugby, six teams, Premiership four teams, Top 14 four teams, four teams, uh, Pro 14, Top League, and MLR one each. I did the seedings, and I've put them into four pools. So four pools of five teams. So from Super Rugby, you got the Sharks, Brumbies, Crusaders, Blues, Chiefs, and Hurricanes. Obviously, you want to try and split them up as much as possible, so... I made the top seeds, the Sharks from Super Rugby, Exeter from the Premiership, Bordeaux from the Top 14, and Leinster from uh, the Pro 14. It's potentially not fair as well, because I think the Top 14 especially will shake up a bit uh, with you know some of those games being played when uh, international guys weren't back playing for their clubs. But anyway, just current state, pipe dream. Uh, so those are your, top, uh, your four top seeds. Then you draw your second seeds, who I made Edinburgh, 
uh, go into the pool with the Sharks, Lyon into the pool with um, Exeter, Brumbies into the pool with Bordeaux, and Sale into the pool with Lentis. So obviously, you don't want to match up whatever competition you came from. Like, you wouldn't put the Sharks and the Brumbies into the same pool because they already play in Super Rugby. So you want to try and spread them apart. Likewise, uh, third seeds, I still kept it with the European club. So I put Bristol in the first pool, Crusaders in the second pool, uh, Munster in the third pool, and Racing in the fourth pool. And then at that point, I had to bring in the champions. So kind of as top level fourth seeds from the top league in MLR. Maybe that's too high. I don't know. But I ended up with um, the Blues going into pool one. They're going to have to be with a super rugby team because you can't avoid it. Wild Knights pool two. San Diego pool three. And Northampton pool four. And then um, final seeds. Ulster pool one. Chiefs pool two. That's the super rugby Chiefs. Toulon in pool three. And... Uh, hurricanes in pool four so i made some pools based on laporte's suggestion current rankings as of the lockdown and um i couldn't stop at the pools right so for pool one sharks edinburgh uh bristol blues and ulster i put the the sharks through as my top qualifier couldn't not, man. The Sharks have been excellent in Super Rugby. Pool 2 was Exeter, Leon, the Crusaders, Wild Knights, and the Chiefs. Again, I had to go with my Super Rugby roots, and I put the Crusaders. They are an all-time dominant team. Uh, pool 3, Bordeaux, Brumbies, Munster, uh, San Diego, and Toulon. I got with a bit of a potential upset. I decided to put uh, Toulon uh, back to their glory days as the champion of, uh, of Pool 3. And then Leinster, Sale, Racing, Northampton, and the Hurricanes. I had to go with uh, Leinster as the winner of Pool 4. How fun would that be, man? This is just... I don't know. I don't know how if it'll ever get off the ground, but either way. Uh, so who are they going to play? I made Pool 1 play Pool 3, so they go to the other side of the draw. So that puts the Sharks. I've made Munster my second qualifier from that pool. And then the Crusaders are going to play uh, Racing 92 from pool number four. And then Toulon are going to play. I put my Blues through. Hey, they're having a good season. Don't laugh. They're having a good year. And then I put uh, Exeter through to face Leinster. And that could potentially be the Champions Cup final this year right there. So how good would that be to see? But that's nice because you've got South versus North. South versus North. North versus South. And then two of the big heavyweights from the premiership and from the pro 14 uh who did i knock out well i knocked out munster i knocked out wrestling i knocked out toulon don't laugh and uh, i knocked out exeter so then these teams play each other leinster plays the blues and the sharks play the crusaders only one northern hemisphere team left you can see you can see i'm a southern hemisphere guy but then I have Leinster knocking out the Blues and the Crusaders, given their experience in playoff rugby, knocking out the Sharks, which means we would finally, finally get that matchup, which I've wanted to see for a long time, uh, Leinster up against the Crusaders. What can I say? We can dream, man. We can dream. Uh, everyone in terms of financial situations at the minute, uh, is not in the best place unless you're a company that makes masks or hand sanitizer uh, most places are suffering so rugby teams are the same if there was a club, uh, club rugby world cup that could work that could get the sign off from the clubs in europe um, that could find a spot in the calendar that could find a way of making the travel work there's a lot of factors that would have to go into place to get this to work then um, it would be a lot of fun. But the organization of it would be horrendous. Like the travel in Super Rugby is already bad enough. I don't know. I think you would have to make it like a World Cup and then it would need to be in a set location. Whether fans would buy into it, again, would remain a bit of a question. I think if it was every year, it would be too much. I think every four years could work. And it's good because in rugby, you've got Rugby World Cup year. Then you've got... An Olympics year, usually, but maybe not this time. Definitely not this time. And then you've got British and Irish Lions. And then you've got one year which kind of doesn't have nothing. It's a normal year. So maybe that's the year that you could chuck this in. Because then you're back to World Cup. 
back to Olympics, back to British and Irish Lions, and then there's that gap year, which is just one standard year with, you know, autumn and um, uh, autumn tests, you know, June tests and um, you know, end of year tests. So, is it spring? I don't know. Autumn tests, they're both in autumn, aren't they? It's autumn of wherever the host nations are. But, um, yeah, it would be fun to see some of the top club teams uh, face off against each other and then we could really actually instead of talking about the hypothetical compare some of these teams to each other i mean we see it now in terms of the european teams playing each other in the champions cup and it's fun to see uh when you see a team from the pro 14 take on a team from the premiership or top 14 or whatever um but yeah there would be a lot to go in to make it to work for the um for the the teams to want to field their best players and all that kind of stuff but um yeah you guys let me know your thoughts. Uh, do you think it could work? Would you watch it? How do you think it would work in terms of travel or hosting or, or that kind of thing? And um, do you think it's viable? Or do you think it's just a bit of a pipe dream and a bit of a political ploy by Laporte? But um, yeah, either way, guys, let me know and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.